All right, everyone. If I can have everybody please mute, um, unless you're a speaker today, you're welcome to mute until you wanna talk as well if you are a speaker today. And um, also for, we will do a Q&A at the end. If you would like to please use the chat box at the bottom of your screen uh, to ask any questions, you can ask them ahead of time. That's fine in case you don't wanna like forget them as we go along here today. But um, you know, please reserve all, all questions till the end um, in terms of if you want to say them out loud. My name is Mandy Pryor. I am director of the Southwest Communities Chamber of Commerce, and we are doing our annual 2021 Community Outlook, and we are so excited to have everybody back. We have a really good turnout for today, and we want to go over what's important to our business community as well as what's affecting resident life here in our area. I want to give a big shout out to all of our municipal managers who are joining us today as They've really done a great job. Uh, COVID has been here for over a year and they've really reorganized things to make sure that it's been effective in helping all of us in the community and in our business community. Uh, so we wanna say thank you very much to that effect for all of you. Our, I will go briefly through our speakers for today. We have Joe Cower, manager of Bridgeville Borough, Stephen Buter of Carnegie Borough, Janice Ad. Adamski, I see I said I was going to say it better this time. Janice Adamski of Heidelberg, Heidelberg Borough, Kyle Talbot, Collier Township, Leisha Mahalko, Scott Township, John Barrett of South Fayette, and Matt Sarakowski of Upper St. Clair Township. I also want to give a big thank you to Joe Verducci, who's going to be our MC for today. I managed to convince him, twist his arm into doing this for us each year. He is the Vice President of Banking Relations for Brentwood Bank, who is also a sponsor today. They're a fantastic bank who's always giving back to the community as well as supporting our local businesses. So we want to thank them. And uh, let's not take any more time away from what we're really here for. So Joe, I am gonna give you the floor. And again, please have your, your microphones on mute and use the chat box for any questions that you have during the session and let's get started. So thank you, Joe, for joining us and thanks to all the managers. Thanks, Mandy. Uh, good morning, everybody. I love to see all the familiar faces here on Zoom. Looking forward to seeing everybody in person uh, very, very soon. Uh, first, I wanna thank the, uh, Mandy and the Chamber for inviting me to be involved with this, with this great event and allowing the uh, bank to be the sponsor. Also like to thank everybody uh, attending uh, this is a very important meeting that uh, I look forward to hearing the information from the township and the borough managers. An exciting time in this area with lots and lots of development going on uh, for our residents and especially our businesses. Uh, co coincidentally, uh, this week is National Small Business Week and I wanted to focus on the importance of small businesses to the community. community. Uh, I'd like to re recognize their outstanding service, innovation and development in our communities. Uh, small businesses account for half of America's workforce and more new jobs come from small businesses than any uh, source, uh, which is a vital to keeping our America running. Uh, here at Brentwood Bank, we have an initiative to support and help small businesses. In fact, based on the definition, we are a small business ourselves. Uh, small businesses are still feeling the effects of the pandemic, so they really appreciate need everyone's patronage. By keeping your consumer dollars local, you're supporting our community as well as uh, the small businesses allowing them to thrive, so does uh, the community. Uh, can you buy a cheaper price at a box store when doing a home improvement uh, other than going to your local hardware store? Probably. Uh, can you get anywhere close to the same level of service and expertise? Uh, there's no way. Um, there are so many other examples of this in the community for retail and service industries. So it's just an easy click away to buy online and head to a big box retailer, but maybe take a minute and think about supporting those small businesses that could use our support. Okay, that's my uh, two minute speech about trying to support the small businesses. Let, let's get uh, started here. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I, as I was telling some of the managers, this is going to be an easy question uh, uh, MC because uh, there's a lot to share within these uh, communities. Why don't we go and just go through each of the municipalities and maybe give two minutes of their accomplishments uh, that they had through 2020 
uh, on just some of the things that even though we were wrapped up in COVID, uh, a lot of things have been going on in the different communities. Uh, let's start. Uh, let's start with the the late guy, Cal Tobit. Kyle, you got to take your mute off. I think we lost Kyle's phone. Let, let's start with Joe Carr. Joe Carr, why don't you go ahead from Bridgeville? Thank you, Joe. Uh, thanks for having me here today on behalf of uh, members of council and the mayor. It's my privilege to, to be here and to serve as the borough manager for the borough of Bridgeville. Uh, 2020 was an interesting year for our community. Uh, not only did we uh, weather the storm of the pandemic, but we sustained municipal operations coming out uh, with, a, with a surplus on finances. Uh, we advanced a lot of flood mitigation work in our community last year. We secured over a million dollars worth of grants to do a lot of infrastructure projects that you saw started last year and that are underway right now. So uh, looking at last year, I think you look back, two things to walk away uh, was the flood mitigation work, and basically sustaining operations during COVID. So just to keep it short and sweet on 2020, Joe. You're muted, Joe. <laughs> Matt Sarakowski, why don't you go ahead from St. Clair? Thanks, Joe. And thanks to the chamber and Mandy uh, for pulling this uh, session together. As always, it's well attended and we appreciate the opportunity to share on what's going on in our region and within our communities. Uh, yes, 2020 was a challenging year for everyone. Um, all of my colleagues on this on this call today, uh, we've been able to overcome, continue to deliver services, uh, both here in Upper St. Clair and regionally. One of the areas that uh, we're, we're very proud of uh, here in Upper St. Clair uh, in 2020, we were able to continue to deliver uh, recreation services throughout 2020. That's something we're, we're building on that success for 2021. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, we have been able to do is provide uh, camp uh, for our, our youth, open our aquatics last year. Uh, we're going to continue to do that in a, in a safe and a, an effective manner. And uh, the, the, the input from the community is, is overwhelming. Uh, the participants are overwhelming. Uh, building off of last year, going into this year uh, alone with our camps, uh, we have over 350 enrolled uh, participants for our, our uh, youth camps for this year, our tennis and golf registration off the charts. Uh, aquatics, uh, we're hoping to open up uh, uh, the aquatics a uh, week earlier this year uh, from Memorial Day. Uh, again, building on the success of last year. So I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit more, but uh, you know, we're very proud on, on, on what we've been able to accomplish over the past year. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you know, working with one another um, regionally here, uh, regular calls, uh, amongst our colleagues, and uh, that's been extremely helpful. So thank you again. Great. Thanks, Matt. Alicia from Scott Township. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I think one of the, you know, main things that we all have done over this past year is maintaining business throughout the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, we have rearranged a couple things as far as you know, dealing with the guidelines that we all had to follow and everything, but for the most part, everything was be was able to be maintained at normal business. Um, a lot of our projects from last year. Hey, Alicia, um, you, you somehow accidentally got muted. There, there we go. go. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what I was stating was the majority of our projects from last year were canceled um, or put on hold. We are starting to um, get working on all of those projects and everything this year. And we hope that we can continue um, to work on all of these projects. Great. Uh, John from South Fayette. Great, thanks, Joe, and thanks, Mandy, for for having me here. Um, you know, I'll be brief. Also, I mean, I, I think my largest takeaway from um, from 2020 was just you know how resilient um, our local communities are, and you know we we've all uh, managed to keep 
uh, the doors open and to uh, continue to thrive. We, we really were in a position where, you know, um, we are an essential service, right? I mean, municipal government um, had to continue in, in 2020 and, and, you know, right out of the gates from the pandemic, the, the leadership in South Fayette, you know, their message to me was don't let this slow down, you know, um, the momentum we've had. Don't uh, postpone maintenance because it could catch up with you later. So, um, you know, we tried to keep all of our capital projects on track. Um, we actually had um, our largest paving effort um, trying to take advantage of, uh, you know, maybe less people on the roads. And, and we, we paved twice as many roads as we typically would uh, and, and got really good numbers for it. So the, the weather was was good. Uh, construction really took off, um, you know, new homes and, and construction was very busy um, in South Fayette. And it challenged our staff to um, to keep up with that demand. It felt like everyone during the pandemic was, you know, um, building a deck or, um, building a swimming pool, like there were a, a lot of permits issued and building permits issued and uh, zoning certificates issued, those those types of things. So, um, you know, staff here at the township um, was pressed to do things a little differently, you know, to work remotely, to use safeguards, but to con continue with that volume of work was was important to us. And it also, you know, challenged us uh, to, uh, to offer safe programming uh, to residents. You know, and I think initially there was a little bit of trepidation of what you can and can't do. Um, but, you know, we, we really were able to, you know, engage with the community and, and offer things like drive up bingo or uh, some other ways that were, um, you know, not no contact type of events to, uh, to, to keep the community somewhat engaged. So challenging year, but I think one that, you know, taught us a lot of, of good lessons. Great. Uh, Steve from Carnegie. Thank you, Joe. And thank you everybody for having me here today to represent Carnegie Borough. I think that I have a, a, just a lot to kind of mirror on what a lot of my other managers have said, but um, we had a lot of positives that came away from 2020, as well as a lot of lessons that we've learned. Uh, to start with the positive, we were able to acquire a number of grants. I won't go through the entire list, but uh, we had received $117,000 for a number of grants ranging in census assistance to uh, body-worn cameras for our police department, as well as uh, recycling efforts and uh, a park project that we're looking at for one of our local facilities. So uh, that was definitely good to see business still maintain, as well as getting some additional funds that you know we may have lost uh, due to the pandemic. Um, there were also a number of grants that we were denied for, but once again, you know we will still try to reuse those for uh, future projects that may come up. Uh, one of the things that we did have a challenge was with the transition for the whole remote working. Um, all of the staff here did a great job. We were fortunate not to have to lay anybody off. Um, we did have a couple of staff members in our parking department that we did let go for a shorter period of time, but that was one of the major impacts that we did see with so many people working from home that the borough's parking uh, did take a significant hit. So if anything, we took some of those learning lessons away. Uh, another positive aspect as far as having the community involved was our yearly farmer's market. Uh, we had anywhere from 25 to 30 vendors on a month or pardon me, a weekly basis. So we were able to work on social distancing in order to get people into town, help with some of the local businesses to get their businesses out on a Sunday, which is typically a quiet day in town. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to just mention is that uh, we've been working on a project with Scott Township and Collier Township uh, for a trail extension starting in Carnegie Borough at the busway and working out to the Panhandle Trail. So that was definitely a big project uh, that we worked with Allegheny County on and they provided us funds to uh, you know, work on seeing that possibly come to light uh, at some point in the future. So uh, just to kind of wrap things up, uh, we were able to move forward. We had a lot of new businesses come into town despite uh, you know, how things were going. We had a large number of housing sales, which was probably one of the highest that I've seen in a number of years. So uh, you know, the, the community is still moving forward. And I think that we have what we need to hopefully work on any challenges we may have uh, ahead of us. Thank Great. you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Janice Adamski from Heidelberg. Thanks, Joe. Thanks to you and the chamber for having me. Very glad to be here today. And yes, last year was a very, very challenging year. Um, 
we got through it. As Steve said, we've learned a lot because of the pandemic and we'll use that to make things better in the future. Uh, most of our recreational events were canceled, but thanks to the fire department, the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus still made their way through the community, um, which was really important for the kids. That was one of the things we didn't want to not do. Uh, we were able to keep our parks open. Um, our public works has been sanitizing nonstop and our residents have been adhering to all the guidances that were put out there. I have to say for a small community like Heidelberg, everyone pulled together. Um, we helped each other out if anyone needed anything. The fire department, police, public works, and myself, we were there to, if we couldn't help them, we'd find somebody that would. Um, we're very fortunate. Our numbers are still low. Um, one of the major accomplishments, council did pass an ordinance in 2020 for the volunteer tax credit program in hopes of getting some more volunteers for our volunteer fire department. Uh, they had been working on that for quite some time. So that was passed last year. Um, other than that, we're, we're just going day by day and taking things as they come. I will tell you that there was a, a big increase in uh, pandemic puppies because we have had more fence permits applied for this year than any other year. It's a record year for fences because of all the puppies in Heidelberg. Um, other than that, we're going through with most of the projects we had planned. We were able to continue installing our ADA ramps. We worked very closely with utility companies that were replacing gas lines. So we were able to get a couple roadways paved. So we were pretty happy at the end of the year. Good. It has been uh, one thing that I have on all the townships that uh, it has brought communities together and in, in being able to do different things together instead of this person's responsible for that and this person's responsible for, for another thing. It has been neat to see a lot of different groups joining forces. All right, last but not least, Cal from Collier Township, you're back. The words everybody hates to hear. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Uh, and I apologize again to everybody for, for my technical difficulties. The things I'm going to talk about here in my two minutes actually uh, deal with the pandemic and, and how we've been able to offer kind of a larger range of opportunities to our residents uh, to participate in our virtual meetings. And here I am fumbling the ball uh, at doing the virtual thing. But, um, you know, 2020 obviously was challenging. And to echo on what Joe had just said, um, I really do think it was great for uh, the communities in the South Hills um, and the neighboring areas to really uh, lean on one another uh, when it came to best practices, what worked, what didn't work. Um, you know, I talked I talk to all of my colleagues, it seemed like on a weekly basis, if not more regularly, we actually did set up a weekly conference call um, just to kind of see uh, how communities were getting through the COVID-19 pandemic from an administrative level. Um, and we may have touched on this previously, but um, you know, local governments were kind of left out in the dark in terms of uh, what guidelines they were required to follow. Were they essential services? Were they not essential services? So um, we've learned a lot over the year. Um, echoing what everybody else has said, you know, we, we do have a couple multi-municipal projects with a uh, traffic signalization upgrade on Route 50 uh, with a couple of our neighbors in Scott Township and Heidelberg. Um, we also are wor and, uh, um, we're working with the Panhandle Trail extension from Collier into Carnegie with Scott and, and Carnegie. Um, a lot of really great stuff going on right now in Collier Township. If you've driven up and down Route 50, I'm sure we're going to get to uh, that a little more later. Um, but great residential and commercial buildings alike. Um, John is right that 2020 saw a spur, especially with um, you know interest rates as low as they were. Uh, we've been building like crazy over here in Collier as well, both residentially and commercially. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's exciting to come out of winter, um, to come into the spring and summer months with, uh, you know, restrictions easing. I'm really looking forward to 2021 and, and all the great things we're going to be able to do, uh, bringing back a full slate of programming at our community center and, and parks this year. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Um, I think everybody would be disappointed if the first question didn't have to do with the toll. Mandy, any thoughts on that? 
why don't we go ahead and start? I know that uh, quite a few of the uh, municipals have uh, been joining forces and in, in communicating to, to the, uh, the different government entities and so forth, but uh, I, I'd like to have just your some feedback if we can. Um, why don't we start with John Barrett from South Fayette on this? I was actually thinking there's no way he doesn't go to Joe out of the gate here. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're right. I mean, I think that toll kind of uh, hit us all by surprise a little bit, you know, and, and um, this is one of those times where you really are comforted by knowing that, you know, you have the support of your, your neighbors. I mean, cause I think instantly, um, you know, I saw that Bridgeville, uh, you guys were working on, you know, a resolution just just to uh, oppose that toll, and you know, um, within you know minutes here, we had that circ circulated around, and I know that all of our leadership and our communities kind of share that same thought, and are, have been working together to to try to discourage it the best we can. I think you know everyone agrees that it's it doesn't seem like the right thing to do, right? So um, the the response really is just about how to how to best frame your argument who to get to and what's what's the way we can have the, the most amount of success to, uh, to to thwart those efforts so um i think it you know that that's that's kind of where south fed came at it and you know i'm sure we're it's still evolving in many ways but um you know i'll pause there I, you know I, I feel like that uh the the toll bridge itself uh, would be physically located in South Fayette. However, you know, the negative impacts it would have um, are far more outreaching um, uh, than just in, into, you know, our township. So um, it's good to see that everyone was has been on the same page there. And hopefully there's, you know, there's some uh, resistance we can put together to, to keep it away. Yeah, somebody mentioned uh, the Rot 50 corridor. Um, that is what everybody I think is afraid of. Uh, but Joe Carr, I know that you had had some uh, leading roles in, in those different things. Do you have any feedback? Uh, no, we were a team here, so it, it was nice. Uh, as a team, four municipalities joined together representing 50,000 people. And uh, we reached out to the governor, our senators, our congressmen, uh, PennDOT, uh, everyone alike. So as a region, we're working as one. Uh, with that, you know, from Bridgeville's perspective, our, our big concern is that uh, the diversion route so to avoid that toll, you're gonna to hit Route 50 and Route 50 is overly congested and has been neglected by PennDOT for some time. And uh, this is the time that, hey, if you're gonna consider this, uh, Route 50 needs to be considered right now for improvements to even take this load. So uh, our focus here is uh, what is gonna happen uh, to our local roads in Route 50? Is it gonna be really make traveling through Bridgeville near impossible? So uh, as a region, I, I, I think we all came together and uh, I, I appreciate everyone uh, stepping up, signing petitions, calling the, the local PennDOT number uh, and your local elected officials. It really is making a difference. So thank you. Al? Yeah, I, I, I'll just echo with what John and Joe both said, you know, when we when we were first informed, and I think it was a, a few things that really hit that were a gut punch uh, to the local communities, and that was um, the way in which we were notified that this was happening um, and, and how the solution was presented to us. Um, you know, there, there's no doubt that we want safe roadways for, you know, our, our motorists to travel in 79 and making sure that the bridge infrastructure is appropriate. Uh, I think is very necessary work, but uh, at the same time, when you're looking at uh, tolling roads um, and impacting such a large amount of our communities in our, in our region, um, there, there needs to be more uh, input at the table to make that decision. And so obviously um, the things that weren't considered or at least given uh, input from the local communities were things like that traffic congestion on Route 50. Um, and, and so I, I just want to repeat what Joe had said. Um, a, a special thanks is really to the businesses, uh, the business owners, the residents that voiced their concerns as well. Um, that that seems to have gotten us some traction uh, with this, and, and hopefully we can either postpone or, or or come together as a region and come up with a better solution to solve this infrastructural problem. Uh, Matt Sarkowski, I know that you're heavily involved in some committees in Harrisburg and definitely interested in, in what your thoughts had to do with this. 
Oh, absolutely, Joe. And and uh, you know, I want to uh, I want to compliment uh, my colleagues here. Uh, when they say that everyone came together, they did. Everyone came together very quickly on this matter. As someone that uh, has has been around uh, for a period of time here, I was an active participant on the Route 50 Corridor Commission um, as a former planner here with Upper St. Clair, and then as the manager. Um, and immediately from the information coming out, as Kyle just mentioned, you know, we were really caught off guard. Uh, but within a very short period of time, there was a joint email going around uh, with the, the managers uh, as to the impacts that this would have on Route 50, on Bridgeville, on Collier Township, on South Fayette. And, you know, our residents, while we're not directly um, in the area of this, our residents use these routes to get to 79, to get to their businesses, to get to work, to get to the, the small businesses that we've been talking about in and around the area. Um, this is something that we knew we needed to actively participate and get the word out and, and our objection to the proposal. Uh, it just it just didn't make sense out of the gate. And and we also want to you know thank the, our, our local state reps uh, uh, from uh, all of our area. Uh, they jumped on board and they've provided a tremendous amount of support. Uh, Senator Robinson just being voted in, you know, he jumped right into the fray and he's been an active voice in this as well, too. So I don't want to leave out any state reps or, or senators, but they've all uh, been very supportive of our objections to this. Great. Uh, Alicia. Um, I think I'm just going to have to mirror what everybody else has already said, you know, um, with the extra traffic that it's going to cause on Route 50. Um, you know, all of the Scott Township residents who are heading south, they're going to end up, you know, being affected by that traffic. Um, along with, you know, more traffic, um, you also have the unsafe condi conditions for the pedestrians. Um, and you also have to consider the maintenance on the roads as well. Um, you know, more traffic is obviously going to cause more maintenance for those roads and everything. Um, so I think that's pretty much about it for, for my end. Uh, that's a great point. Uh, that's that's the horror story for myself is is about the maintenance of the roads. Who's going to pay for that? Well, the residents of each of the communities are going to have to pay for it. And then the toll money goes elsewhere. So, yeah, that's a great point. Uh, Janice, any other comments? I uh, just echo what everyone else said. Heidelberg is really not affected other than the fact that most of the residents and businesses here utilize 79 and the traffic and the uh, pedestrian thing is one of the issues that we have discussed in the past. And we can just only hope that everyone's voices are heard and that things go the way that we hope they will. And last uh, but not least, Steve, do you have any other things to add to it? Uh, just to reply to what Janice had said, I know that with Carnegie being on the outskirts of things, um, one of the things that Matt had mentioned was, you know, residents and business owners, they use that on a regular basis. So, you know, even though it might not impact us from a traffic standpoint, I mean, just the use of it and, you know, not impacting the neighborhoods around there is, is the biggest thing. So, um, you know, we definitely appreciate everything that all of the managers have done and all of their uh, commissions and councils. So, uh, you know, we're here to, of course, support however we can. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, just recently, we had uh, the announcement of the COVID relief funds that each of the townships are hopefully uh, down the road going to, to be receiving. And was just curious on, on if there have been any discussions in, in, with your, your commissioners and your councils to what, what are some ideas and thoughts that you were going to plan on doing it. Uh, to be honest with you, the funds aren't even really descriptive of how you're going to apply for them, how you're going to get them. And uh, and then what you can use them for. Uh, just curious on your thoughts on, on what things that you have uh, uh, have found or, or, or what discussions you've had. Steve, let's start with you first. Sure. So as of right now, totally agree with you. We've just been having discussions at this point as far as uh, how we could use those funds. And one of the projects that Carnegie would be looking at is infrastructure along our business district, West and East Main Street. Uh, we have a fairly large, uh, uh, I guess, lighting project that we've had, uh, or pardon me, we've been working on for some time and just trying to get the amount of funds together where it could all be done in one piece and not piecemealed out. That's something initially we've been looking at. Uh, we have some other facilities that we would like to possibly do some just infrastructure upgrades on. So 
really revolves around infrastructure and hopefully waiting to see if that's something that will be applicable for these funds. Janice? Well, we were certainly happy that they finally were able to allocate funds to the local municipalities, that's for sure. And as you said, as soon as we figure out when we're gonna get them, how we're gonna get them and where they're gonna be able to be used, that would be a good thing to find out as well. Um, Heidelberg is just planning on using those funds for infrastructure, mainly road paving. Um, so we are in the process of trying to figure all that out right now. Uh, John Barrett. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I mean, it's it's tough because, like you said, there hasn't been any real guidance as to how these funds can be used. Uh, I mean, one thing of note, I mean, it's it's a, a significant amount of, of money. I'll, I'll share with, with folks just what I've seen for South Fayette Township is a little over $1.5 that the township would get through these relief funds. So we haven't had a chance to really bet that with um, all of our leadership. But, you know, I know that in talking with my board members, their interests are uh, a couple of things that, you know, put it, put it into um, infrastructure, into, into um, things that would help to also stimulate the, the economy, but also trying to find some creative ways where maybe we can, um, you know, create some in, incentive for additional businesses to, uh, to want to locate here or um, to find ways to, to use those, those funds as a, as more of a, a local stimulus than just to, you know, um, uh, pave some roads or fill some some budget holes. That's a good idea. Alicia. Um, I know that Scott Township recently received some money from the CARES Act, um, which was used to offset some emergency and policy uh, police wages. Um, outside of that, though, I believe uh, the township manager, Denise Fitzgerald, is currently working on um, trying to get some information as far as, you know, what we have been discussing right now, as far as, you know, where this money is coming from and what we can use it for. Um, so more questions um, than answers at this moment. Um, but I think once we, you know, work on getting those answers and everything, we'll have a better idea of what to do from that point. Matt? Yes, Joe. As a matter of fact, uh, we are actively working uh, with both the Commonwealth and National GFOA, which is the Government Finance Officers Association and the Treasury Department, in an attempt to get further clarification uh, Commonwealth-wide and nationwide, but more so Commonwealth-wide and here locally on what this money can be spent on. Right now, it is a very narrow definition. Um, it's very limited. Um, and while as, as uh, John mentioned uh, we have received notification on the amount of money each municipality will receive. Um, it, it, it's limited um, in, in where we can go with it. So we're looking for uh, further guidance and, and hopefully uh, a broader interpretation um, as to how this can be spent that will help many municipalities in, in many areas that were impacted by COVID over 2020. So hopefully in the next uh, coming weeks and, and hopefully month, uh, we'll hear more and we'll get more information. Uh, distribution has yet to occur. Uh, it will occur at the county and city level first, uh, hopefully within the next 90 days, the first payments. Uh, it'll be in two payments. And then uh, within 30 days of the cities and counties receiving their funds, uh, local municipalities will receive um, their first installment. Uh, this money is to be spent by 2024. So a little, little bit further information on that, but we hope, hope to receive additional guidance uh, through GFOA, uh, which we're actively involved in right now. And that's, that's kind of nice. I didn't hear the 2024. So at least you have some time so you can plan too, if, if it's a significant project. So that's great to hear. I yes. was wondering if you, I know Mark Romito is heavily involved in that organization. So I was wondering if he would have any feedback there. Great. He, he's heavily, uh, heavily involved in it and uh, we hope to stay at the forefront of it. Yeah. Joe Carr. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, Bridgeville has been informed that we'll be receiving about $485,000 uh, in this federal uh, uh, funding. Uh, Bridgeville is very fortunate for the Bridgeville folks that are on the meeting today. Uh, our council's uh, finance committee is chaired by a very seasoned, experienced local banking official. And uh, he's, his committee has been very diligent in meeting to brainstorm what type of infrastructure projects that uh, we need to be putting at the forefront to consider this funding for. So we've been actively discussing it and uh, following along what everyone else said, uh, we're just waiting to see where it goes. But uh, the uh, finance committee has been very active on figuring out where we wanna go with it. Hey, nice job, that plug. Yeah, 
Yeah, Joe, you realize I uh, I have nothing to do with your review, right? <laughs> I, 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 I totally understand <laughs> that. That, that committee is chaired by a wonderful woman as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and last but not least, Kyle. Well, I, I, I just want to commend all the other communities as well for taking a, an approach to this American recovery uh, funding with uh, some pause until we do know more. Uh, you know, it'd be very easy when you see that, uh, that big six digit or seven digit number roll in uh, start planning uh, major improvements in your communities. And while we all have those wish list items, we do want to make sure that we're spending that money appropriately um, so that when we are eventually audited on that, um, we're not paying back uh, for projects that weren't uh, fundable through that money. So uh, I want to, I'm glad to hear that everyone's kind of in the same boat right now and that we're having internal discussions on what we can spend that money on. Um, we and Collier are having very similar discussions, um, most likely in the infrastructural, especially in the stormwater um, world as well, and, and solving some, possibly some of our MS4 requirements from the state level, if that money is eligible for that type of work. Um, so we're all waiting and, and seeing uh, more information become available. Uh, we'll make a decision at that time. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Um, one of the things that you have a lot of business owners and a lot of different uh, sales type people uh, on this call, and we definitely would want to be interested in what type of developments are, are happening, what types of things are going on in, in the community that, that we could see maybe in the next 12 months uh, that's going to change the, the atmosphere of, of uh, each of your uh, municipalities. Um, you know, I, I have a couple perfect examples, but I'm going to let uh, the, the different people uh, start with that. Uh, Matt, why don't you go ahead and start first this time? I'd be happy to. Thanks, Joe. Uh, two major projects that are going to be underway here. One actually is already underway that uh, will impact how you get in and around the community to our businesses and just the overall look and theme through the community. Uh, the McLaughlin Run, Lesnant, and McMillan Road intersection, if anyone's been through uh, the, the Bridgeville, Upper St. Clair side of, of town uh, is the, that project's well underway and that's the, it will include the installation of a roundabout at this intersection. This project will run through the end of next year. Uh, they've just moved into phase two uh, of a multi-phase up to six plus phases. Um, it's going to affect uh, traffic through the area. You've heard me on these calls before talk about uh, the impacts of traffic in and around town. Uh, the other major project is going to be the completion of the Route 19 resurfacing project, uh, which was delayed due to COVID. Uh, the first part was completed uh, southbound to the Peters Township line. Uh, PennDOT has advised us of an intent to proceed from the Cloverleaf down to Gilkeson through our business district, uh, South Hills Village, uh, and down to Galleria. Uh, this will include paving, pedestrian improvements, uh, we will continue with upgrades to our signals, which will include new mast arms uh, that you see throughout the township. We will be continuing with that theme. And then also adaptive signal improvements from the South Hills Village Mall down to the Galleria area that will be installing an adaptive signal system uh, once completed, which will help uh, get in and around our business district. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Janice, would you like to start with the next? Hope you're on mute, Janice. As I mentioned before, um, we have a couple of projects underway. We are going to be installing some more ADA ramps. Um, we also were able to obtain a, another grant from the Toxic Use Reduction Institute through Massachusetts um, University for Heidelberg Park. We are attempting to increase the CO2 from the air to build the soil up organically since it's close proximity to Chartier's Crip. So within the past two years, we've been simply using organic material and we've seen a huge impact on the field. Um, the other thing is we're trying to get our recreation back. Council wants to be very slow in doing so though because of our close proximity to one another and 
a low population. They don't want to have any unnecessary spreads. We are planning on having our annual garage sale. It'll be on May 15th. If anyone wants to drive through Heidelberg, people will be having garage sales in their home. And we're also hoping to have a vendor show done at the Heidelberg Volunteer Fire Department. If anyone is interested in that, they can just contact me. Um, our parks are available for rental. And depending on where we stand at the end of May, we are hoping to have our annual Memorial Day event done at Heidelberg Park. So that's about all I have. Okay, Alicia. Um, I think one of our biggest projects that we're gonna be doing is uh, the road program. Um, we also have a lot of sanitary and storm sewer projects that we'll be working on this year, um, as well as installing um, more ADA ramps in our pool. Um, I think this year's main focus would be probably um, with our recreation program and getting that back up and running. Um, after the pandemic, um, we did not have a recreation program last year due to that. Um, so we're looking at getting that back into the works, um, but also maintaining uh, the safe guidelines and everything that we are, are given. Um, our pool is going to be opening up early this year. Um, so we are looking at opening up our pool for weekends only, but we are starting to open that up this Saturday, May 8th. Um, it will be open weekends only at that time. Um, after Memorial Day, we will hit our normal regular pool hours and everything. Um, so hopefully we'll have a good outcome with that as well as our recreation program and getting the kids back into, you know, their normal summer activities and everything. Lisa, did I understand right or read somewhere that right now you're just doing Scott residents and then as time goes on, then it'll open up. Is that correct? Correct. We want to make sure that um, all of our Scott residents um, who want to purchase pool passes, um, we want to make sure that they get um, first first dibs on those. Um, so we'll first be opening it up to residents only, um, pool pass holders. And then from there, um, depending on what the requirement is as far as occupancy, um, we'll expand from there. Hey, uh, Jackie just asked that question. She was reading my mind or I was reading hers. I haven't figured that out yet. If you guys have questions, please feel free and type them in the chat. If we can squeeze them in uh, in between questions, please do so. Um, okay, great. Uh, let's see. I'm, and I apologize. I keep jumping around. Uh, Steve, why don't, why don't you have you go next? Yes, sir. Uh, for Carnegie Borough, uh, we have just awarded our yearly paving program and we'll be getting our pre-construction meeting together for that. So uh, we plan to get that sometime, uh, pardon me, started sometime uh, mid-summer. Uh, we also have a uh, park project for a new shelter to be constructed at Carnegie Park. Uh, as a lot of the managers had mentioned, our park rentals have uh, started to increase a little bit just as far as people, you know, looking for an open space to gather. So it will be nice to add a new amenity to the park there. Uh, we also have a project that we're fin finishing up through Alcasan through the GROW program. It was in the amount of $593,000. And that was for the addition of a storm sewer uh, along Broadway, uh, right in our business district. And uh, another, we'll say, uh, event that had gone on, uh, I believe it was two weeks ago, um, on May 17th, uh, the local businesses in our Carnegie Community Development Corporation did a cleanup day where they went through a lot of the planners and different areas throughout the business district just to get things ready for the spring. Uh, they have an upcoming day in the next couple of weeks to follow up on what was done before. So it's just, uh, you know, I would like to thank all the businesses and the CCDC for working together to, uh, you know, to get our roads and everything ready to go for uh, the warmer weather. So those are some of the items we have going on currently. You have a virtual walk coming up too, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, so the virtual 5K is currently open. And uh, unfortunately, the number of registrants has been a little slow to begin with, but uh, we've got just about over $15,000 in donations. So, you know, despite us not being able to have that physical race, uh, the community and uh, the residents have really been great and still supporting the fire department. Great. All right, Cal Tovet, everybody wants, has one question and one question only. You're up. Well, I, and I'm sure I know what that question is. 
And the answer is the Sheets is open for business. Uh, and, and anybody can go in. It's not only for call your township residents. So now that we got that out of the way, um, there is a lot of development uh, commercially going along uh, Route 50 in Collier Township. Um, I'll start on that end of things with, uh, with the sheets being open. Um, there is some commercial space uh, next to Steen Road and Route 50 adjacent to the uh, sheets that's available. Um, no plans in at this point, um, but I, you know, I encourage anybody that may be interested in a new office space, um, there is space available uh, by the sheets. Um, we'll have a new restaurant going in. The Napoli uh, is moving from up at um, Great Southern Shopping Center uh, over to by Sheets. Uh, if you continue up the road, uh, you'll notice we've got a couple of new buildings under construction, uh, both part of Great Southern Shopping Center and across the street. Um, those are two banks, uh, Chase Bank and Bank of America uh, will be uh, moving into those new structures. Uh, and as you make your way further down towards Chartiers Valley, um, you know, right now before our zoning hearing board, we do have uh, Burlington Coat Factory is going to be using a portion of the old Kmart building, which is great. We're excited to see a, a tenant going in and reusing that. Um, and uh, I think that's a joke. Okay, thanks, Kyle. And then in addition, in addition, uh, uh, we, we do have uh, Chick-fil-A uh, moving into the uh, Taco Bell uh, portion in front of Chartier's Valley Shopping Center. I know that that's been the rumor for a year and a half now. Um, they are before our zoning hearing board as we speak uh, for approval uh, of that plan. So we're looking forward to welcoming in these new businesses. Uh, I know this came up a couple times in the past, um, what's going on at Vanadium and that intersection and the road widening. Uh, that project has been uh, postponed and put back on the schedule uh, five or six times now um, over the last three or four years. Uh, the last I heard is that it was a go uh, to redo that intersection again this year. Um, so we hope to, we, we've seen some preliminary drawings from PennDOT come out uh, for that road widening and making that vanadium intersection a true four-way. Um, so uh, I know that there was some concern with the development going forward before PennDOT could do that work, but it looks like they're going to push forward with that um, this year. So looking forward to uh, those commercial projects. Um, and then just to touch base real quickly on a couple of township projects, uh, we are, uh, you know, we're continuing to grow our residential stock in terms of uh, developments that are, are underway. Uh, we are making uh, huge improvements to a few of our parks, uh, all new play equipment at our Hilltop Park and at our Kelly Field Park as well. Um, and we have some uh, pretty exciting updates going on at our Collier Park uh, with a new electronic LED message board uh, and some additional equipment over there as well. So uh, a lot going on in Collier and uh, we hope you all come and check it out for yourself. Uh, Bridgeville, Joe Carr. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh Really, Bridgeville's been bustling lately, and uh, it's we got four main focuses for 2021. It comes down to parks, infrastructure improvements, ways to engage the community with increased transparency, and, and flood mitigation efforts. I hate to beat that, uh, but uh, there's a lot going on here that's really going to shape the future for our community for the coming generation. Uh, regarding parks, we're wrapping up work at McLaughlin Run Park. The park essentially has been closed since 2018. Uh, recently, there's two new shelters that's been put in there, an enhanced and improved entrance, new parking lots and an access road. We're repaving the trail. Uh, we made improvements to the skate park. Uh, and there were some other little site amenities that were added there. Council just authorized improvements to Chartier's Park and we're under the design there. This will uh, rep uh, basically repair uh, some stream bank erosion issues at the bottom of the access road into the park, repave the parking lots, repave the road and, and fix the landslide issue and also put a very uh, elaborate playground uh, system in down there so basically uh, give a new playground to the community of Chartiers Park so hopefully by the ending of 2021 uh, recreation is at the standard that our residents uh, expect out of a community so we're really excited about that some infrastructure improvements that are going on within the community are, are rather large uh, we have an improvement on Warner Avenue uh, that's repairing a landslide and repaving the road we have some unique storm sewer separation projects that are trying to uh, re uh, eliminate pollution 
uh, in our stormwater system before it discharges into the creeks and McLaughlin Run, run, uh, McLaughlin run to improve water quality in the watershed. Our road project was just awarded and should be done this month. So you'll be seeing that activity. We had some improvements to the municipal building. Uh, we just put a parking lot in. So now when you come to a council meeting, you don't have to find a spot out on the street. There's parking here at the building. Uh, Piggy telling what Kyle was saying about Collier Township, we have a community uh, message board outside that we put uh, community news and, and happenings out there. It's just trying a way to improve connectivity with the, with the citizens. Uh, we have new uh, welcome signs and some gateway improvements that we're doing. You've probably just seen them go up. So we got some enhancements that we're gonna continue with that. Uh, flood projects are really interesting. I know the big topic has been the ball field at McLaughlin Run Park. Uh, that project put a trash rack is what we call it uh, in the creek and that project catches uh, dumpsters, cars, debris that float down the creek from bottling up uh, culverts or bridges down in downtown Bridgeville, hopefully mitigating the risk the severe risk of future flooding. And, and that's been successfully installed and, and it's worked once already. Uh, the field has been seeded and, and, and just finished up topsoil work. So hopefully we'll have grass coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, with that, you know, it is gonna be an all purpose field. Council has yet to decide uh, what avenue they wanna take it by putting it back to a ball field. But uh, come summertime, you'll be able to go down there and enjoy passive play on the park. It isn't a detention pond. It is an all purpose field that's dual purpose. So it's kind of a unique thinking outside the box project there. Uh, we have a project that's gonna be getting started this week to put uh, an access ramp into McLaughlin Run uh, behind the beer warehouse and it establishes the, the stream bank there. Uh, that's on Jane Way, we call it. Our public works crews are doing dredging work within the back channel at the confluences of Pinkerton Run, or not Pinkerton, Painter's Run, I apologize, and, uh, and uh, McLaughlin Run. We're removing thousands of tons of sediment under DEP approved permits uh, that basically have acted as corks that's been backing up into the borough. And uh, our crews have been very successful with removing uh, that ton of gin house, saving thousands of dollars to our citizens. Uh, we're advancing a FEMA project that's $1.6 million project uh, that will relocate and demolish some nine or 10 flood prone structures on Baldwin Street. And we're hoping to have a determination on that project coming up here within the next couple of weeks. So that's finalizing. Some community engagement projects that have been very interesting here in the community is that we're getting started now on updates to our comprehensive plan. Our planning commission has been very diligent and uh, I thank them for their efforts to spearhead that. Uh, we submitted a grant application to help fund that and uh, we're, we had RFPs uh, put out there and we proposals. So we're gonna be selecting a firm, hopefully within the next uh, couple months to get that project started by the year end. We have another project that's out to bid right now that would put an active transportation plan together for our community. Uh, this is, we received grant funding from uh, the Active Allegheny program. Uh, the goal of this planning effort is to make their borough more walkable and pedestrian friendly. Uh, just bridging on some community activities that we're trying to increase connectivity and uh, uh, communication with our citizens. Uh, this LED sign at the borough building's up and running. Uh, you, when you're at the red light, you can sit there and see what's going on. We improved our newsletter. We're more active on Facebook and, and uh, our website. Uh, we now have a YouTube channel where all our meetings are posted uh, the next day to YouTube. So we're trying to, so you can stay involved and informed if you can't attend a meeting night. Uh, we send out text messages and uh, uh, all that pretty much sort of our neighbors are doing. But uh, our goal is to make sure that everyone is heard and a part of a community and that's what makes Bridgeville special. So really 2021 is an active year of public improvements of what you're investing into your community and hopefully you'll see dividends by the end of the year uh, on what uh, where, where we take this. So thank you. Thanks, Joe. And last but not least, and John, I saved you for last because I'm sure you have a ton of things to talk about. So why don't you go ahead? Yeah, oh, thanks, Joe. Um, I'll try to be brief. I know I'm standing in front of everyone in lunch, so I don't want to be the guy that had, makes you have a bad day. Um, but yeah, a lot going on. You know, the one thing I want to throw out there first uh, as a, more of an announcement is that the, the township is going to uh, have a 4th of July celebration uh, jointly with, with Upper St. Clair Township on July 4th this year. So we were uh, very happy to be able to announce that uh, fireworks will 
will be going on as, as planned. Um, you know, staying in that uh, park, um, you know, arena, uh, the fireworks are, are shot off in Fairview Park. And uh, this month, uh, the board will be advertising a project that will connect a, a, a roadway from Mayview Road up to Fairview, uh, creating a new entrance to the park. And that's gonna really open up the door for that park. That's the first phase of a multi-phase uh, plan that will ultimately have a splash park and new ball fields and pavilions and restrooms and things like that. But it all starts with the infrastructure. So getting that, that road up uh, from Mayview to the top is going to be a, a great and opening up a door for, for Fairview. Um, you know, th this, this year and in, in recent months, uh, we opened the doors to um, an acid mine drainage facility uh, behind the farmer's market. Um, if you're familiar with that on Miller's Run Road, and, and if you have a chance to take a look at it, you really can't see it from the road, but if you, you drive down uh, behind the farmer's market, you can get a glimpse of this thing. And, um, you know, the, the difference it's made to uh, the orange colored water on Chartier's Creek is, is really dramatic. You can even see the difference right as we speak. Um, they say that four miles of Miller's Run and four miles of Chartier's will be um, uh, transformed into what they're intended to be, which is, you know, warm water, trout-filled uh, waterways where uh, people can enjoy, enjoy them. Um, they're pumping uh, um, two mil uh, one million gallons of uh, acid mine water out of the drain each day and treating it. Uh, they're pulling out 690 pounds of iron from the, uh, from the stream and, and, and uh, getting clean water back. Uh, into Chartiers and Miller's Run, which is just extraordinary. So really happy that that's happening because uh, it, it really does um, allow for the community to enjoy some of those natural recreation areas along Chartiers. Um, you know, switching over into commercial stuff, um, you know, uh, the township approved a planned um, a commercial center uh, where the Star City Movie Theater once was. Uh, there's some con construction activity going on there. Uh, just some uh, grading and earthwork going on right now. Uh, no, no building permits, but um, they did go through planning and got board approval. Um, there are you know about 50,000 square feet of commercial space that will be developed there. Um, you know, the developer spoke about restaurants and retail um, and some service related things. So that, that's really going to open things up right off the interchange. And another reason why, you know, we, we don't want to see a toll on the bridge right by the, the, the exit there. Um, you know, shifting over to Newberry, I know that that project has had its ebbs and flows. Um, recently, there was approval for a, a BJ's Wholesale Club uh, to move in uh, in proximity to where Carvana is now. Um, it's actually under construction. As we speak, uh, they they want to be open by Thanksgiving, and they seem to have you know put forth the effort to to make that deadline. So it's exciting to see that that finally come together in the out parcel of the you know uh, where the first watch and um, five guys are. Uh, Millie's ice cream opened um, just this weekend, so it's good to have you know kind of a homegrown um, ice cream shop close by there, and uh, also in that plaza, a, a tropical smoothies opening up. So. Lots of uh, refreshments <laughs> to be had close by, which is good. Um, uh, you know, our residential developments are continuing. We, we haven't approved um, any new residential developments this year. However, um, we do have a number of them that are in construction. Uh, third phase of the, um, the charter homes development um, along Mayview is, has been approved and is currently in construction. Um, in that area, you, you probably have noticed the over the bar restaurant is open to the public. Um, they seem to be doing a great business. I've been in there a number of times, really, really well done and, and another uh, great uh, resource to have in the region. Um, uh, a great place to, to get takeout from or to eat. They, have, they do have some outdoor dining and, and their indoor space is, is set up really well where you can you know, enjoy yourself safely. Um, you know, and then other things that we're doing, uh, we are revisiting uh, our, comp our comprehensive plan. Um, so we want to start thinking about um, you know, uh, particularly some uh, some zoning issues uh, around the, the southern land around the Southern Beltway and how we can best position that uh, area to um, to develop. Um, Township is also moving forward with uh, a new municipal building and police station. Um, we've uh, cleared some some land along Hickory Grade Road um, and are hoping to have you know, a project out to bid this fall. Great. Thanks, John. Um, I think this is kind of our, our time where we uh, just open up the uh, floor to ask any questions of the managers. Uh, Mandy, you want to take over? 
Sure. If anybody out there has any questions, um, it's up to you whether you use the chat box, you want to stay anonymous, or you're welcome to just speak your speak your mind now and ask a question. I don't think anybody's too afraid of the answers out there. So, Hey, John Barrett, uh, what's going to happen with the police department, the current police department building and the municipal building? Yeah, you know, we're still we're going through a planning process for that. You know, ultimately, uh, what drove this decision is to we want to retain um, you know, public works at this facility. So, you know, we've given some thought to uh, creating a like community center library in this space. Um, but I think we're all in agreement that, uh, you know, the, the facility as it stands um, probably doesn't have a lot of architectural value. So um, we're working with architects now to uh, design something for, for this area. Um, but we want to, we, we think we've made more room by moving, you know, the activity of the administrative offices and the police out of the way um, so that we can use it for, for library, for community center, maybe some more recreation as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Hey, hey Mandy. Yeah. Mandy. Hey, Matt Wilson. Hey, I had a general question for the, for the uh, borough managers. Who else in legislation can we voice our opposition to about the toll red? Any of the managers want to take that over? Someone's got to answer them. <laughs> well, I mean, it's always good to reach out to either your local state rep or Senator Robinson's office. We also still, we just sent it over yesterday, but we have our petition on uh, change.org, which you could leave a comment. We actually are sending the comments and we have over 2000 signatures that we are we sent over to Devlin's office yesterday as well. So there's a couple of different avenues for you to take. Obviously, um, Senator Robinson's office would probably get you to the right place the fastest as that's where I think the majority of it's going. Okay. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's a PennDOT project, so, you know, um, changing the minds of the Department of Transportation and whoever can influence those decisions <laughs> is, is who we yeah. need to get to. I'm, I'm just concerned. Hey, I live in Peters Township, but I travel, I travel to go to work there every day, and I can tell you that that will create a big, big overflow, as everyone has said, and... Uh, and if we don't speak up, it's gonna get it's gonna get rubber stamped, as as we all know. So once they had their edict, you know, they're they're kind of setting their ways. And I think everyone in this call needs to reach out to their legislation and let their, let their voice be heard. Otherwise, it's 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 gonna get ramrod through. So thank thank you for that. I appreciate it, Matt. If I could add, um, this the, the Senate just passed a bill last week to further restrict the use of P3 and the P3 system, P3 funds, uh, due to the questions that have arisen, not only here in the Bridgeville you know, region, South Fayette region, but all throughout the Commonwealth due to other P3 projects uh, like this that, are, that the, those areas are questioning as well. So the, the House and Senate are looking to restrict uh, these projects moving forward. I, I think they uh, will be successful in that area. And I know uh, Senator Robinson is, is very active right now uh, to see that that occur. And, and, and what you're stating, it just doesn't slip through. Uh, we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any other questions out there for any of the township or borough managers? Any last comments from, from the managers? Joe, I do have one comment. Uh, and, and Well, I actually have a couple of comments. Uh, number one, thanks again, Mandy and Joe, for, for putting this on and, and for all the participants. Um, you know, it, we, I think, frequently talk amongst ourselves about all the great things that are going on, and we talk with our boards, and, uh, you know, we hope that our residents tune in to our public meetings and, and take advantage of our websites and social media accounts. But, um, you know, any opportunity we have to talk about the growth and the success of the region, um, it can't be understated. Uh, there's so many great things happening in our communities. 
Um, and it's a testament to our elected officials and our appointed officials. So thanks for giving us this forum to kind of, you know, brag a little bit about what we have going on in our communities, because it's all good across the board. Um, the one thing I do want to mention, um, if, if you have a chance uh, and you are interested in getting uh, the COVID-19 vaccination, uh, there is a pop-up clinic at our community center this Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, Pre-registration is required and spots are limited, uh, but if you go to our website, www.callyourtownship.net, uh, scroll about halfway down the page, you'll see the link uh, to register for that event. Again, that's this Thursday, uh, 5.30 at the community center. It is the Moderna vaccination, um, but there's all the information you need uh, on our website as well. And thanks again. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, well, I would also like to say thank you to our township and borough managers for bringing all of this information and continuing to do great work behind the scenes that sometimes we don't always know what's happening, but you're doing great things be, you know, for all of us. So thank you. And Joe, wonderful again. How do you do it? Uh, we're so appreciative to have you and Brentwood Bank as a sponsor and uh, bringing this forum to everybody each year. So thank you once again. I have a couple updates um, before I let everybody go, since I have a captive audience. Just a reminder, we will have our 36th annual golf outing at Scenic Valley Golf Course on June 24, 2021, 9 a.m. Scramble. Please join us. It's always a great event, and I will say that the last time it sold out, so make sure you become a part of that. We also have sponsorship opportunities for those of you who don't golf, or you can just join us for lunch. I don't golf, come hang out with me. You can you can volunteer with me, we'll have fun. And uh, we're also asking for t-shirt sponsors. Uh, so it's only $25 to put your name on the back of a t-shirt and these will go out to our volunteers. We might have some available this year. Next Monday, we and I'm John, I'm so glad you brought that up. We'll have a ribbon cutting at Millie's at noon for the, the Chamber of Commerce and the business community as well as open to the public. So if you can join us, come over, get some samples, try some homemade ice cream. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, come enjoy a ribbon cutting and help introduce them to the community. And lastly, we have tons and tons of employment opportunities that are coming into the chamber. If you know anybody, especially at an hourly rate uh, or seasonal worker, restaurant worker, please send them our way. We can help match them up with a job and we hope to fill as many positions here in our region as possible because that seems to be an ongoing issue that the chamber is facing. So. Thanks to everyone for attending. If anyone has any further questions, feel free to email me, Mandy at southwestcommunitieschamber.org, and I will be happy to answer them or field them, send them over to the right representative for the right township or borough. All right, everyone, go eat lunch. I'm starving. Uh, let's go enjoy our half sunny Pittsburgh day. Thanks, Mandy. Thanks, Thanks Mandy. Bye, Thanks, Mandy. Thanks, guys. Thank you.